North Korea is a big, a big problem, and we will deal with that very strongly. The recklessness of North Korea puts the world's peace at risk. North Korea, the most dangerous country in the world. Infamous for its bizarre and brutal regime, run by a crazy dictator who won't let anyone in or out. But these guys, they just want a haircut. Why would we go all the way to North Korea just to get a haircut? Well, to answer that question, we've got to open our history books to page one. Huh. Korea. Korea spent the first half of the 20th century as a colony of the brutal Japanese Empire. As Japan withdrew after World War II, the Koreans gained independence, elected a socialist government, and things were pretty sweet in Korea for about two months. Cue the big fellas. The guys who had just won World War II decided to move in. So they randomly divided the country along the 38th parallel with the South under US control and the North under the Soviet Union. In the communist North, Kim Il-sung continued the land reform of the socialist government, forcing landlords and their sympathizers to flee South. But in the South, things were a little bit trickier. The Americans expelled the socialist government and brought back the Japanese guys that everyone loved so much. And whoever didn't love them was forced to flee north. Fueled by the two competing superpowers, this division led to all-out war in 1950 and, fearing the spread of communism, Uncle Sam and all his buddies went to town on the north. think that pretty touching tugs at the older hearts no i told you not to put that in there you can't just have dead babies in the first minute of the documentary no one's gonna watch it now i would have said it's pretty eye-opening no it was stupid so what do we know about north korea today well we know for a fact that even saying kim jong-un's name will boost your ratings no matter where you are in the world the dictator North Korea Kim Jong Un. The leader Kim Jong Un. North Korea ka sankitana shah Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong. 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 This North Korean guy never fails to impress. One of the most dangerous countries in the world today can strike Americans where they live. Even the school kids are ready for war. The rogue state, rogue state, rogue state conducted its fourth nuclear test, threatening a preemptive nuclear attack. The U.S. is increasingly being held nuclear hostage. You can see dead people everywhere in the street with torture, rape, forced abortion, and execution. Wow, that place seems absolutely awful. But surely it's not all bad news. I mean, they do normal stuff too, right? No, nothing is normal. Not even the boring stuff. Not even haircuts. New hairstyle that's getting a lot of attention. Men now have to wear their hair just like their leader. Under orders to get a Kim Jong-un haircut. Have to cut their hair a la Kim Jong-un's distinctive hairstyle. And once again, edgy comedians, TV presenters and advertisers all band together to make exactly the same joke. To ask pedestrians, can we own you? How many haircuts did you get today? Un. Un. You've been unified. Understand how unbelievably, unbelievably weird uh, North Korea is. We're just going to take a little off the top. Justin Bieber. <laughs> Anne Hathaway. With a ridiculous haircut and nuclear arms. Uh, they're not gonna blow me up. <laughs> Anne Hathaway. <laughs> 
So, the only problem here is that the haircut law never existed. If we dig through the sources back to the original article that started this viral story, we arrive in Washington DC at a news company called Radio Free Asia. The original article is based entirely on unnamed sources, quotes plucked out of thin air. But regardless of its unverifiable origin, it gripped international media and everyone was ready to cash in. It seems an exciting news story comes out of North Korea every month. The North Korean government has announced that it found a unicorn. <laughs> North Korean official was just executed for bad posture. Apparently after slouching at a public event. They have fallen asleep at a meeting. The regime often uses grotesque methods. He was stripped naked, thrown into a cage, before being eaten alive by 120 starving dogs. Kim and his brother observed the one-hour ordeal. Did you hear that one, that Kim Jong-un abducts scores of girls to pleasure him? Hand-picked based on good looks and measurements. Holy shit! But did you hear about the time he tried to ban sarcasm? I want you to know that your ban on sarcasm is a great idea. <laughs> And by the way, that haircut, amazing! What the haircut law and all these other amazing stories share in common is that at the very centre of this media whirlwind, they're based on absolutely nothing, 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 nothing. It starts to feel a little bit peculiar that every month we're bombarded by hundreds of identical copies of a lie telling us that somewhere out there, there's a regime that enforces conformity and lies to its people. But just because these stories can viciously and frantically whirl around and multiply in popular media doesn't mean everyone believes them. We decide to go test it out in Newtown. Located in Sydney's inner west, Newtown is a cultural hub for the alternative, progressive and free-thinking free spirits of the city. The exact opposite of North Korea. This place is the cutting edge of edgy fashion. It's seriously cool. I mean Coldplay filmed a music video here. We decide to see what the average Newtonian thinks. Have you heard the news that um, every man in North Korea is required to get the same haircut as Kim Jong-un? Ha have heard the news? Yeah, something like that. It doesn't surprise <laughs> me anyway. Haircut. Yeah, like the, the same haircut that Kim Jong-un has. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's very, very, very old news. Yeah, yeah. That's so stupid. <laughs> I mean, North Korea is renowned for a lot of bizarre puritanical concepts coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, I, I have heard that. Yeah, that's correct. Read that somewhere. Wouldn't they all look like Kim Jong Un as well? Like, I don't think you'd get mistaken for him everywhere, yeah. especially over in North Korea. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to grow along like me, me, like you know, it's the way of life. It's like everyone does it, and it's. I think the law is probably like almost blurred between what their actual ideology is because they're so sort of brainwashed, I guess. Do you think anything like this could ever be imposed in Australia? <laughs> uh, I reckon they'd have a hard time getting it to work in Newtown. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Like, look at where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> that is Newtown. <laughs> everyone yeah. is so different and unique. Like Newtown, for instance, you know, where two, you know, everyone dresses to their own, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you know, do you know why? Like, uh, just the nature of our political system and the level of freedom we have as individuals. There is no real form of self-expression. Exactly. You know, take away individuality, really. You know? I would not get the same haircut just because someone else is doing it. Oh. Not in Australia. No. It's too developed. No, it's impossible for me. <laughs> How did you decide to grow your beautiful, long, luscious hair? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, just, well, yeah. <laughs> People should have the right to just look the way they want to look. Yeah, I agree with that. How did you decide to grow such long, luscious hair? Your long, luscious hair. <laughs> such long, luscious hair. You're long and luscious right now. Beautiful. Quiet, quiet. Oh, thank you. Oh, I've, I've, I mean, I grew up, you know, uh, on the beach pretty much where everybody just had long hair, so it's been like this for years. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I saw his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Newtown, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it turns out the worldwide North Korean clickbait epidemic is worse than we thought. We have to find out the truth for ourselves. We decided we had to get to the bottom of this once and for all. We have to go to North Korea. Wait, Alex, to... Alex, can you just pretend you're running? What? Yeah, yeah, I'll put a green screen up. It'll look sick. You sure? Yeah, it'll look brilliant, trust me. All right. We have to go to North Korea to get a haircut. And 
there he was, Alexa, a dirty, disgusting hillbilly. He had a large amount of hair, the majority of which he didn't want. And when he showed the hairdresser a picture of the exact amount of hair he wanted, they got rid of the unwanted hair, just like hairdressers do all over the world. And you know what? I think the North Koreans did a great job. So, it turns out the North Koreans get haircuts just like everyone else in the world does. What an exciting adventure, eh? So, where does that leave us now? Well, the nukes are still a problem. North Korea's tested four of them and that's very scary. But imagine how scary it is for them to think that the US alone has tested 1,032 nukes. Even then, we don't really need to test ours because we know ours work. We've used ours against real people. And you know what? We're not even sorry. <laughs> what about the news stories about slavery? Yes, it is very confronting to hear stories about slavery in North Korea. But for some reason, it's not quite as confronting to watch these stories on your television or your smartphone, which we know are made by slaves. And if you want to talk about the biggest slave drivers in the world, the only reason you're watching me right now is because you purchased a device which is made for you by your own personal slave. And you don't even know his name. Excuse me? Do yeah. you know where the laundry detergent is? Oh yeah, mate. Aisle 7, next to the sponges. Thank you very much. What about the prison camps? I mean, it is pretty disgusting when someone does that to their own people. At the same time, it's a little bit confusing. I mean, what is a prison camp? Like, we have prisons, sure, but the bad guys... The bad guys always seem to have prison camps. It's as if our prisons are just great places. You serious, Alex? It's as if our prisons are just great places to be. Our prisoners are known to burst into song and dance because, well, the amenities are so great and they get to go home when it gets dark. But the prison camps, oh boy, the prisoners are stuck there. They've got walls and guards and, and the prisoners get physically and sexually abused. No. Prison camp is a useless word. It means nothing. And before you say, no, Alexa, the North Koreans, they put their people in prison for no reason and we don't do that in a democracy. Well, if that's the case, you might need to have a conversation with the Australian Indigenous community or refugees in detention or the Black Lives Matter movement in the States. I mean, these are just examples of people that could tell you quite a bit about large groups being imprisoned for no reason. So what do we do with this word? Well, we could either start saying that we have prison camps or just that North Korea has prisons, which isn't much of a news story, is it? I think it would be much more interesting to focus on the country that has the highest prison population per capita which is America. <laughs> but... What about the bizarre military parades? That's some pretty confronting stuff. But imagine how confronting it is for them that the largest military exercise in the world happens twice a year on their border, where the big scary guys that invaded them in the past practice invading them all over again. But for an organisation like the military, a parade is the cutest thing they can ever do. Because when an army isn't busy parading, they're busy killing people in actual wars. And yes, North Korea was in the Korean War, and that sucks. But since then, the US has invaded Guatemala, Egypt, Lebanon, Panama, Vietnam, Dominican Republic, Cambodia, Laos, Angola, Iran, Libya, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Granada, Bolivia, Virgin Islands, Philippines. Alex, Alex, you're running out of space. What do you mean? I, have, I haven't got to the 90s yet. No, but you literally can't fit in any more countries. Maybe, what if I move my head like this? No, look, just you've made your point. Just finish it. Uh, but for some reason, North Korea is a dangerous, unpredictable, rogue state. And America's just a normal country. 
they tend to use these words like rogue state, prisoner camps, death squad, instead of just country, prison, the military. And suddenly, all the brutal stuff that we do doesn't seem quite as bad. Before you know it, we're trapped in this giant, never-ending Nutribullet commercial. Juicers make juice, blenders make smoothies, but the Nutribullet makes supercharged superfood Nutriblast. Death squads. They have death squads over there. So glad our army has nothing to do with death. This supercharged superfood Nutriblast is delicious. Fuck regular juice. It seems like all the scary stuff North Korea does, we do on a much larger scale. But then again, we've got pretty good excuses for our violence. We did not want it to come to this, but we have got to bomb those guys. It's about defending democracy. It's a question of basic human rights. Don't call them slaves. Those workers in the third world, they're just more competitive. They just want it more. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I've heard these excuses before. Come on, buddy. I'm the last guy that wants to throw you in a prison camp. It's just, what am I meant to do? It's the Supreme Leader's word. Look, mate. I know, I know this doesn't look good, but the sun god, he just, he really wants your heart. We all have a unique way of justifying exploitation and violence. The main difference between North Korea and us is that we're winning. Our violence is the strongest. But in order for this media spectacle of North Korea to work, we've got to see the country as this bizarre, violent, rogue state, as this thing that's so different and such a threat to our peaceful and secure international system. But what this process does is it tries to make you forget that our international system has abused mankind far worse than anything this dictator of that tiny country could ever dream of. So what we need to do is we need to agitate and organise to take down capitalist imperialism right, once and for all. Right, right, you know, right, Vladimir right, Lenin... Thank you, thank you. No, I had more. No, no, thank you, Alexei. You proved your point. It was very enlightening. You can take a seat. Fuck, that was depressing. Let's, um, let's get some happy music or something. Here we go. Here we go. Here's something you don't see every day. People having a great time in North Korea. Take it away, girls. an apartment or a granny flat. We're all looking for ways to save time and money. Well, tonight's show is and all about life hacks. Thank you, Joanna. You know, once upon a time, you had to be a billionaire to get into indoor landscaping. But now, with these simple life hacks, you can have your very own birds of paradise indoors without breaking the bank. Alex, 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 
Wait, 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 check it out. You don't have to pretend to be on TV anymore. I am on Better Homes and Gardens. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean that. It's just, we're actually on the news. Sydney guys sneak into North Korea for a haircut. Making a documentary there about getting their hair cut. And they were successful. You guessed it, North Korea to get haircuts. No, what? <laughs> Two Sydney mates decided to travel to North Korea for haircuts. Who'd have thought that our North Korean haircut documentary would be caught up in this media whirlwind? Especially since the doco attacked the profit-driven mainstream media, which feeds off of misinformation and sensationalism. But somehow, miraculously, the mainstream media was completely on board. Did you even watch the news story? What? That's not what they said at all. Instead of saying, these guys went to North Korea to see what it was like, they stuck with the same worn out, unsubstantiated narrative that turns any North Korean news story into a profitable clickbait spectacle. Let's talk about this now, a couple of lunatics. Basically risk their lives. <laughs> like, I don't want, don't want to get you shot or anything. <laughs> Once you're married as a woman, you have to cut all your hair off and have it short. <laughs> Let's flamethrower a general. Well, they're treated like gods. Basically, basically says that he beat Tiger Woods in golf. Starving peasants are eating grass. <laughs> in fact, they were so wedded to the existing North Korean news story formula that they copied the same lame jokes that we criticised in our North Korean documentary. Justin Bieber! <laughs> Anne Hathaway! You're not the only ones that went for a haircut. Two other people had a very different experience. I think we've got a shot oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Hathaway! <laughs> but how did this happen? How could so many news outlets actually report our story but somehow push the same coordinated sensationalist formula while ignoring our politically subversive content. Well, in centralised regimes, when an idea that challenges the system appears, it can simply be censored. But in capitalist regimes like our own, we do things a little differently. While censorship still exists here, the system can also protect itself in a very revolutionary way, by absorbing subversive ideas. It can take something that challenges the system, find value in it, and repackage a watered-down version of it for profit, and eventually it becomes just another commodity. So instead of reporting on our subversive documentary, the media moulded our story in the way the North Korean brand sells the best, as a spooky, comical caricature. And no matter how hard you fight, you can't escape the circus.